So, in the UK, we've officially moved out of Plan B. Of course, this doesn't change the fact that we are wait still... Minute, wait a minute, what was Plan B? Uh, oh, Plan B, as in COVID Plan B. Yeah, what was that? <laughs> not even joking, I have li- literally not been listening to the government. About Plan B was basically the temporary restrictions and measures that we endured until Omic- basically Omicron had peaked. Right, I didn't follow any of that. Okay. <laughs> okay, shall I just miss that line? No, 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 just carry on. No, okay. Okay, in the, in the UK, we have officially moved out of the government's plan B, regardless of anyone knows what that is. Of course, this doesn't change the fact that we're still in the midst of a pandemic, but I'm not talking about COVID, I'm talking about the, pan- the pandemic of hypochondria. I'm convinced it's hypochondria, because even today, I still have to endure the humbling sight of young and perfectly healthy people wearing face coverings, not only indoors, but outside as well. Before we move on, I, I I have noticed that there are still some people wearing the masks. A lot. I it wasn't that many. I went to town yesterday, and I you know it, before before the um the lifting of the restrictions, mm. I would say it was probably about you know eight in ten people who were wearing masks, one just wandering mm. around everywhere. But now it's the sort of reverse, so it's eight in ten people not wearing masks. I mean, it is still a fair number of people, I suppose. Well. <laughs> On my walk to work today, it, it seemed to me that the eight out of ten people were wearing them. Really? And th- th- those people were not exactly those you would assume to be vulnerable. Mm. Um, in my view, there's simply yeah, it is embarrassing. There's simply no reason for this anymore. It's well documented that the virus doesn't spread at all well in open air, and acknowledged by the wealth, well, masks are acknowledged by the wealth, World Health Organization that. But anyway, I'm convinced that most ma- mask wearers must have come across these facts before, so we have to ask why on earth are they still persisting with them? Well, a lot of similarities, I believe, can be identified between the most impassioned supporters of the EU and those who sympathise with the idea of permanent mask use, as embodied by this person over here. These people are predominantly middle-class millennials who have a pathological need to exhibit their moral superiority to distinguish themselves from the awful unvaxxed plebs beneath or they just like being told what to do by unaccountable structures of authority like the person in the meme over here. So just as a quick thing, right? Mm-hmm. I, I went into this uh, health food shop to get the sugar-free chocolate yeah. bars that I get, and uh, the, the woman behind the counter was wearing a mask, but the thing is, of course, the restrictions are lifted. And so I asked her, you know, so, uh, isn't today the, the day that the restrictions are lifted for the mask? Mm. And it's like, yeah, but I wear it for my own health, and I didn't have the heart to tell her that yeah. they prevent you from spreading yeah. it, at least partially. Yeah, and I, I just didn't have the heart to tell her because there was clearly uh, it, it was the way she had said it. There was a bit of hoity toity. She's emotionally invested in the mask. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it was, and it wasn't. It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't just like uh, it wasn't fear either. It was. It was superiority. It was. You know. And yes. So I, I just was like, okay. Yeah. No, it's unfortunately I've had similar experiences. I have abstained from being host from being hostile. You yeah. were obviously hostile, but I've I've had to show say curb my inner ape on this matter but here's a question (laughs) where in the uk are we most likely to find emphatic support for both covid restrictions such as well mask wearing and rejoining the european union is it scotland it's not scotland even though that's that that could be a short second it's london oh is it obviously (laughs) but funny enough i found this a report by sky news that shows london school children to be especially keen on the idea of keeping their masks on for the foreseeable future so let's play the video, shall we? Yeah. Yeah. I'll be keeping my on for the safety of my family, my peers. And I feel like, because there's the COVID cases are continuously rising. I think as of January, it was like 150,000 new cases. And they want to take down face masks. I personally don't think it's the way to go. So I'm going to keep mine on. I personally will be because I don't think it's right that it's up to choice now because it is still out there. Coronavirus is still... A dominant thing in the world. Do you know what? A lot of people are keeping them on and it's making me feel a lot safer. But then there are some that don't want to keep it on, which is 100% understandable. Some of them have got exemptions, so they don't want to keep it on. Um, but it's up to choice, but I don't think it's right. Yeah, I'll definitely be keeping my mask on because um, the mask isn't such a big thing. It's not that annoying. Yes, I understand yes, where people say it can be annoying, but it's the bare minimum, in my opinion, you know, to make sure that to just ensure not only my okay, safety, so that, that, that's but probably um, safety, you know, and yeah, probably the, enough for us. We take got the temperature. I, I know they're children, so I probably shouldn't go too hard on them. Well, here. It's who's brainwashed them? Yeah, that's the question. I mean, not not a single brain cell has really been displayed here. I mean, it makes me feel safer. I mean, for a start, you're a teenager. Let's just get this straight. Teenagers are not dying of COVID. That is, yes. unless they have a pre-existing condition, which means you're dying with it, not of it. Hmm. But here's the thing I find amazing. 
They live in London. London. Surely if you want to uphold such high safety standards living in London, you'd have to wear four stab-proof vests, a helmet, and carry a rape alarm with you all of the time. Why are they fetishizing the mask like this? But also, like, and you're not worried about uh, pollution and things like that. Yeah. I bet. I bet if you were to look at respiratory diseases, mm -hmm. are they more common in London or in you know the shires? <laughs> London, you know, obviously. It, it, exactly. You know, you live in a big city. You're like, yeah. Well, I'm wearing a mask for my health. Yeah. Okay. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Check your lead poisoning levels, I don't know. But it's also this unceasing emphasis on rising cases. It means nothing. No. It literally means nothing. I mean, what what should we be focusing on? Rising cases and, well, assessed in accordance to death rates, ventilation, bed, all of the, all of these things have been declining recently, yes. as far as I know. Ventil I mean, I ventilation beds actually declined, even as Omicron rose. Yeah. All you have to do is look at the government's own COVID data website to see this. They're quite clearly just being taught by teachers who are sage NPCs. Yeah, because uh, Omicron's essentially mm. parent, which is great. Yeah. Omicron is good news. It's basically for the majority of people, yes. if you even have symptoms. But anyway, this isn't entirely surprising, I'm afraid, given that during the summer of 2021, 40% of UK citizens said they saw the mask as a long-term solution to living with COVID. <laughs> what does it Forever. solve? Exactly. What, what does it solve? Like, we're not going to get rid of COVID. It's mm. an endemic at this point, I believe. Mm. It, so what now? I have no idea. All it says is 64% would like them to remain in place at least until coronavirus is controlled worldwide. But in the long term... 40% of people want mask wearing in jobs and public transport to remain forever. Equally, 41% were opposed them altogether. This was a sample of 1,025 British adults aged in between 16 and 75 from the 2nd to the 3rd of July last year. Now, were, they, were they British adults in London, though? Probably. probably. Yeah, that's the, the question. Yeah. God. Uh, but if we move on, I found any even more people who want to wear masks forever on the grounds that it has become a way of life for them, and these people <laughs> are Americans. <laughs> yes. Robin Argenti, for example, said she cannot yet envision a future in which she doesn't wear a mask. We don't know if it is ever going to be over, the 57-year-old resident of upstate New York said oh, of the go. pandemic. Yeah, York. She's in poor health and concerned that the emergence of new variants and the millions of people who refuse to get vaccinated, the country will never actually overcome the coronavirus. I will be masked, masked up for many, many years, she says. There are too many unknowns. Coronavirus? No. So why wear it? These people, are, it's literally a safety blanket, isn't it? Yes, it it's is. It's just like the, the lady at the shop that was just like, you know, I wear it for my protection. So it's, but it doesn't... Look, I'm holier than you. Yeah. That's all this is at this point. Well, it just it just seems like a safety blanket. Like yes. I'm hugging this and the mask will keep me safe. It's like, that's not true. Yeah. But it, it, isn't, it isn't just older people who have, shall we say, legitimate reasons to be a little bit more cautious. Mm. The young are at this as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So Ben, ben Rosenblum is another one, a 23-year-old digital... Uh, archivist he said i've been a miss a misophobe since middle school meaning he's afraid of uncleanliness and germs a global pandemic as it turns out didn't quite exacerbate his condition as much as it substantiated it if i go out somewhere and i touch crosswalk lights and stuff like that and i have to open doors and everything i don't feel like i'm insane for coming home and vigorously scrubbing my hands down he said he took to mask wearing pretty quickly and has come to enjoy it it does give you this sort of <laughs> privacy in that you're hiding half of your face he said even after he is vaccinated and the pandemic ends, Rosenblum plans on continuing wearing a mask in public or perhaps identifying as a woman in Iran in a few years. See, I'm a, I'm a misophile. I, yeah. I think uh, uncleanliness and germs are good, especially for young kids. Yeah. Like when, when my, when my one-year-old drops his food on the floor, I just pick it up and put it back on his plate. Mm. It's like, no, you're going to eat that, and now it's covered in germs, and your immune system is going to yeah. learn about this. Do you know what my nan used to say? What? I know, don't misinterpret this, but she used to say a little bit of dirt doesn't hurt. Well, it doesn't. I it think doesn't. it's good for you, and no. I, I, it's a good household rule. Yeah, no, I, I, I think it's good for them because, like, look, you're gonna, you're gonna encounter, you know, it, like it's, it's this intuitive wisdom that, that you know, I used to play in the dirt and get messy when I was a kid, and yeah. I was always perfectly healthy. Yeah, you have to let kids play in this. That's how they build up living immune systems. Exactly. That's I oh. genuinely believe it. Yeah, but if we, if we if we move on to um to the F1 paddock club. We can actually see that the sporting industry is acting almost as if we've never had a vaccination rollout at all. Try not to cringe at the title. Formula One, F1, or F1 Paddock Club, keeping our guests safe. Is that your job? 
Is my safety the the club's job? Well, if it's not their job, they're positing it as such. Yeah, I thought their job was to, I don't know, serve me cocktails. Yes, especially and, as you'd be paying an awful lot of money to do this. Of, of, yeah. of what sounds like a very miserable experience. But anyway, if we scroll down a bit. But I would like to assure you that the Paddock Club's top priority has always been and remains the well-being and safety of guests and the teams they work with. Although the Paddock Club guest journey will now look and feel slightly different to have enhanced hygiene and safety measures, we'll do our best to provide you with a world-class experience. A world-class experience, what, where you can't even see the people's faces who are serving you. But providing the world-class experience, say, so go back three years, that was the mm. primary goal of whatever this club is. Yes. Now it's now it's your safety. Yes. Well, as you can see in the core principles, masks are included, face masks and hand sanitizers are provided. Social distancing. I know. Track and trace. To yeah, offer a yeah. slight wipe on this, McLaren team principal Zach Brown has said he's keen for the FIA to relax these rules in the paddock, but he's the only one, to my knowledge, who has come out in support of this idea. Hmm. But moving on, this is the worst one of all, I'm afraid. The University of Cardiff are taking gaslighting to new levels by contriving a study, having contrived a study which shows mask wearers to be more physically attractive. Oh, I'm sure they are. Yes. I, I'm, sure, I'm sure. But the, the, this is, this, this, there may be some truth to this, you know? Yeah. Because, you know, if you've got something wrong with your face, hmm. covering it up might help. Yeah. So if we move on to the independence coverage of this, we can actually see what the problem is and just how contrived this is. So new research has found face masks, particularly the surgical kind, make people appear more attractive. <laughs> Listen carefully to this part. The study presented female participants with 40 male faces of low to high attractiveness in various states, partially covered by a cloth mask, a surgical mask, a book, and not covered at all. The 43 female participants were asked to rate the attractiveness of the man in each state on a scale from 1 to 10. The results showed that faces were considered the most attractive when covered by a medical mask. The participants also considered the faces they observed to be more attractive when wearing a cloth mask compared to not wearing one at all. So only 43 participants, all female, all aged in between 18 and 24, and all judging men wearing masks. All I'm saying is I think the, this, this, uh, this is about concealment, right? So, mm -hmm. like, you, 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 you get this with... Um, I don't know if I should say that. Uh, but, no, say it. <laughs> uh, like, or maybe not. You can dress up to make yourself look more attractive than mm -hmm. you actually are. Like, think of, like, Wonder Bras and things like yes. this, right? So when wearing a Wonder Bra, you give this woman, like, an 8 out of 10, but then if she takes it off, she might be a 6 out of 10 mm -hmm. or something like this. And that, that it might be the same uh, phenomenon that's happening with the masks, as in, oh, he looks like he might be attractive and takes it off could the mask. be. But do you, not, do, do you not think that, I mean, given, given I mean, that... I'm not saying it's a good study. Give, right? give, give, given that women are the more agreeable of the two sexes mm. by some margin, do you not think that they may have been selected with this... Um, knowledge and level. Okay, we've just got some information from John. They are all psychology students from Cardiff University, all in the same class. So that's even worse. Then hmm. so they've all so they've they've all probably random all, women already got an institutional position on yes. this matter entirely. Um, but if we read through some of the details, the study's co-author, Dr. Michael Lewis, said the research was undertaken to see if the pandemic could change people's feelings and the attitude towards face masks. A similar study conducted in Japan in 2016 found them to reduce a person's attractiveness. Oh, really? Yeah, but he said the results ran counter to the pre-pandemic research, but it was thought masks made people think about disease and the person should be avoided. Really? I yeah. think that's probably more likely, as in without the motivated reasoning to try and encourage people to wear the masks, people didn't like the masks. Mm. But now we have a reason to try and interpret this as a positive. Yeah. Well, it's more attractive. Trust us. Mm. Well, it shows that the pandemic has changed psychology and how the wear mask wearers are perceived. And when we see someone wearing a mask, we no longer think that that person has, has a disease I need to stay away. I do. Yeah, well, so do I. I mean, well, that, that's... I mean, surely something's going wrong there if you are not looking at someone wearing a mask and not thinking disease. And why would you be wearing it if you're not thinking about diseases? I mean, what this exactly what what this shows is that this has the mask has evolved into being a safety fetish, yes, which is counter to its purpose um, and a, a false symbol of security and freedom. Yes, this is a reason not to keep them. It is not a reason to sustain these positive affiliations. It is a reason to blimmin' get rid of them, not the other way around. They, the as has been proved time and time again, especially not outside, and shown much promise either. By the time objects become a fetish for social interactions like this, we need to snap the hell out of it. Yeah, it's not good, is it? It's no. like imposing this kind of psychological disorder on 
a huge amount of the population and they're just totally misinformed. Oh, the, the constant refrain is it makes me feel safe. It's like, mm. that was never what they were for. No, they were to stop you from spreading droplets to infecting other people. Yes. What, you know, so these, these people are delusional and insecure and presumably not happy that the rest of us aren't engaging in their delusions. Yeah. And what, what they're doing is a vice. Yes. I mean, there is, yeah, there yeah, is, what, there is one thing in understanding the legitimacy of authority and following rules. There is another thing doing it without even critically reflecting on it for a single moment mm. or entertaining the idea that they may be doing this for reasons other than your safety or not un completely unrelated to COVID. You just have to look at what's going on across mm. the world to see that governments are so hesitant to to give people's freedoms back because they're actually coming to quite like the political gains they can make from perpetuating a culture of fear. Yeah. This is This is exactly why they are... You have the likes of Jacinda Ardern, for example, who are doing what they are doing. Mm. I mean, she, she's quite a unique case, to be perfectly honest. But mm. it's, yes, snap out of it, everyone, especially London. If you enjoyed that segment from the podcast, The Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to subscribe to get access to all the premium content we have on the site, such as this contemplations that went up over the weekend, Social Hierarchy. And uh, Josh is behind this one. So if you want to follow Josh as well, you can always go over to Getter. So we get the next one. You can see Josh Firm there. That's how you follow him on Getter and find out what else he's producing. Thank you and goodbye.